When I was growing up in Skyros, they were the golden ponies, the favorites. Every pony loved them, but I saw right through their act. They Wait, is that, is that, them, hold up, hold up, right hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, Celestia and Luna are here? What? Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does this color scheme look familiar to you? Does this color scheme look familiar to any of you? Skyros? S what? Skyros, the fabled Alicorn City in MLP G5. Or something else entirely. You know, if you look at the color scheme in these shots, you realize this is a place we have seen before. In G4. What if Skyros is not a place in Equestria, but another dimension parallel to Luna's dream world? Was this the celestial plane we've all been looking for? Hello, Internet! Welcome to Fim Theory, the show where we deep dive into the mysteries of the magical land of Equestria. Today, I have a mind-blowing theory to explore about the upcoming My Little Pony Generation 5, specifically focusing on the agnabic location known as Skyros. We're about to embark on a journey into uncharted dimensions. Now, if you've been keeping up with the latest G5, and why haven't you, it's pretty mid. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is Opalescent's sudden appearance in Opalescent's recollection. And I know what you might be saying, but we shouldn't trust Opalescent's visions as proof of truth. But maybe we should. I mean, I, I have proof that, you know, Celestia and Luna were actually could have possibly been snooty at this point and juncture, in which opalescence would have very well large feelings for these two. Allow me to explain. So, sisters acting snooty towards opal is not canon, right? I mean, they've always been kind of with each other. They wouldn't be snooty with each other, right? Or maybe it was. Remember how before Equestria was established? It was a strange and dark time. A time when ponies were torn apart by hatred. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? Recall for me the flag that was planted in the play of... The, the Hearthwarming East play. Okay, this image. So question. Why would Luna and Celestia exist before the fire of friendship? Rather than provide a detailed account of the sisters' past actions, but then you bring up Skyros in and the puzzle starts to make sense. They were seen as fillies being snooty Opal because this was before the fire of friendship and because the flag and the journal nudges to the fact that it used to play as princesses, it doesn't stand to mad finger that they would be snooty towards Opal's different race. Luna and Celestia were the powers of the moon and sun collectively and Opal was the element of fire. What was Twilight's element? Magic. What was Cajun's elements? Love. Now you're starting to make sense, doesn't it? I think that they would definitely be snooty in this timeline if, and I stress the word if, Celestia and Luna were fillies still going into the same place as Opal on the same day. So why haven't they mentioned it? I mean, come on, really? They're, they're princesses. They're going to forget something, right? Anyway, gone down that rabbit trail, let's go ahead and continue about Opalescent's sudden appearance. Why would Opalescent have a sudden appearance here in Skyros of all places? This doesn't seem to be visually appealing as you might think. I think it actually means something. I think Opal appeared one day where Luna and Celestia were honing their powers of the sun and moon. Because Skyros, ladies and gentlemen, is the same place where Twilight got her wings. You might have noticed the stunning visual of Skyros, or at least the lack of stunning visuals of Skyros. Looks very familiar for some reason. The fabled Alicorn City. Yeah, that's right. Apparently Skyros is an uh, Alicorn City that Celestia and Luna grew up in. <laughs> to which you might ask, what city is are we showing in these shots? Where is the city? Well, I don't think it's supposed to be a city. Where, where does this thing city even come from? 
If this was a city, you would see maybe buildings in the background, but I didn't. Nobody did. What I did see, though, caught my eagle-eyed attention. The d distinct color schemes used in these shots. Take a look at the comparisons to the scenes from Generation 4 and Generation 5. Does that does this look even remotely see there? See that? Color palettes are uncannily serial. It's no coincidence, my fellow theorists, this suggests a strong connections between the two generations. So, was I wrong about G4 and G5 not having a connection? Nope. Like I said before, locations and names are similar, but if you throw a wrench into the main lore of G4, forget it. I mean, Celestia and Luna were never snooty, right? Right? This color scheme is very telling that this has existed before Luna, so it's not Celestia's, in fact, it, but it has always been here to receive alicorns to transfer them into alicorns themselves. The architecture, the background, it all lines up perfectly. It appears that Skyros has been hiding in plain sight this whole entire time, right under our noses. What does this relevation mean? Now comes a massive name drop for what the name is, and confirm now that Celestia was not the one who gave Twilight her rings, but rather Skyros itself. So what do you think, every pony? Does this revelation change your perspective on Skyros? How do you think its connection to Twilight's transformation will impact the story in MLPG5? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, it's just a theory. A film theory. Have a furry bro hoof.